This video is to fully explain how to use the Tuple 3D implant scanner. It's important to watch it through because we are trying to make incredibly precise measurements and there are a few counterintuitive ways that the accuracy could be thrown off. Let's quickly go over the basic usage of the Tuple 3D implant scanner. I've got the software installed, so I type in the patient name and I click scan posts. It realizes that the scanner hasn't been calibrated recently, so it tells us to do a calibration. This means we have to point the scanner at the calibration plate, hold the capture button, and move the scanner from side to side. I've accelerated the video to save your time. The scanner is now ready to use, so we're going to screw in the marker posts to the abutments. Now the scanner is going to measure the position and angle of the abutments with extreme accuracy. I'm telling the software that we need to scan four posts and then we've got to point the scanner at the posts, hold the trigger and move it around so it gets a clear view. As soon as the scanner screen goes back to green it's done. And you can see it's captured the post correctly here. Now we can export highly accurate STL files of the abutment locations. You can see them here and now you're ready to carry on the design process in whichever software package you choose. Note that we also exported CAD files of scan bodies. So now we have highly accurate STL files of where scan bodies should be and this means you can register our data with your intraoral soft tissue scan too. So that's the basic usage, but let's go through the whole process one more time in full detail. You'll find the latest version of our PC software on our website. We download it and install it. Now when we've run it, we have to set it up. The calibration plate number is found on the back of your particular calibration plate. It's important to get this right because every plate is different and using the wrong plate number would result in a small but significant measurement error. The post set number will be found on your post holder and you need to enter that so that the scanner knows which posts it's searching for when you do a scan. The purpose of the country code is so that it uses the right Wi-Fi frequencies for your country. So it should be set to GB for Great Britain or US for the United States and so on. Okay, now let's have a look at the scanner. We have two cameras to make the 3D measurements and some super bright green LED lighting to light the posts up. They are bright enough that if you intentionally stare at them, they may be harmful to your eyes. You shouldn't do this. But if your patient is sedated, or even if not, the red glasses block the light and make it safe and comfortable. So this is the shutter button that you hold when you're calibrating or scanning. And the power button on the other side is a push to switch it on and a long push to switch it off. When you switch it on, the screen will turn green when it's booted up and ready to go. To connect the scanner, you can use Wi-Fi or USB. USB is fast, especially for calibration, but then Wi-Fi is the most convenient for scanning. If you want to connect by Wi-Fi, you also have to connect the laptop Wi-Fi to the scanner Wi-Fi. So if you go to your Wi-Fi network, when the scanner is switched on, you'll find that it has created a Wi-Fi network called Implant Scanner. So connect your laptop to this. The password is shown on the screen. Now when you use the scanner, it will connect via the Wi-Fi. Now a very useful tip. You might find that you've lost your internet connection because you're connected to the scanner Wi-Fi. What you can do about this is you can use the Wi-Fi dongle that's provided with the scanner. And when you do that and go to your Wi-Fi network, 
you will find that now you have Wi-Fi 1 and Wi-Fi 2. Wi-Fi 2 is the dongle that you just plugged in. So you can keep your laptop connected to the Wi-Fi network for internet and you can use the dongle to connect your laptop to the scanner, both at the same time. When you're putting the posts in, you can tighten them finger tight. They stop suddenly and they should now be accurately positioned. That said, it requires a certain engineering touch to know how much you can tighten them. And we certainly wouldn't want you to over tighten them and damage the patient's abutments. So to be sure, you can use a torque wrench and set it to 9 newton centimeters. Also be sure not to screw the posts in at an angle. This is the wrong way. You could cross thread the screw and cause abutment damage. This is the right way. You keep them straight as you screw them in. Each post has a unique dot pattern, so you can put any post in any position and the scanner will work out where they all are. Let's take another look at calibration. When you're asked to calibrate the unit, the scanner starts up showing four faint dots and you should align these with the four big dots on the calibration plate. There are actually two cameras and so two images. Note that if you are too close, you have no chance to line up the big dots for both cameras. It's the same if you are too far back. But when you are at the right distance, everything lines up pretty well. So then you press and hold the shutter button to start capturing. While capturing the calibration plate, you have to move from side to side, about plus minus 30 degrees, making sure to keep the big dots in view of both cameras at all times. The green bar on the laptop should go across the screen, and then calibration capture has finished. If it fails, it probably means that you collected too many images where the dots went out of shot. Calibration lasts for one hour. If you are wondering why it needs to be calibrated, it could be that the temperature changed since the last time it was calibrated, and to get down to 10 micron accuracy levels, even the slightest thermal expansion of the machine has to be accounted for. Be careful with your calibration plate, because it's quite easy to scratch, and this could reduce the accuracy of the scanner. However, the holder keeps it safe. If we take another look at scanning, the most important thing is to be at the right scanning distance. It's the same as for calibration. When you're at the right distance, the posts will be central in both images on the camera and the dots on the posts will all be lit up green. It's a good idea to do a practice scan and measure out the ideal scanning distance so you can get a feel for the distance that you're aiming for. Let's have a look at this scan with six posts. It's harder to capture six posts because they block each other. So say I only go halfway round now you can see it's detected only four out of the six posts, and it shows up which posts have been detected on the screen. On the screen, while you're scanning, you'll see that brightly coloured posts are found and done. Dim coloured posts have been found, but the scanner needs to collect more data to get the full accuracy. So now I realise I'm missing two posts that haven't been captured yet. So all I have to do is move the scanner back into position, push the trigger again, and carry on scanning, this time going further round to get the other two remaining posts. And then you see now they've been captured, and the scan ends automatically. It's a good idea to do some practice scans. All you have to do is put the posts on the table like this, and then scan them. There's a few more subtle tips to think about. The scanner is most accurate when it scans head-on, so try not to go too high up or too low down. When you put the posts in, try to keep them dry, because if there's water droplets on the posts, this could cover up dots or cause reflections that could make it harder for the posts to be captured. And also make sure the posts haven't been scratched before use. Let's pretend that these posts are too crowded to scan in one go or we have more than six implants to scan in one jaw. What we can do is make two scans and then merge them together. So in this example, we are going to shoot scan one, then swap over the positions of some posts, or add more posts, 
and then do scan two. But note that we must always leave the positions of two posts unchanged. Then we can merge them. So the first scan is four posts. And there they are. Now we click add posts. And it asks us if we are sure we want to add more posts to this jaw. Then I do a second scan. It captures the posts and merges them with the first scan. Actually, there's a problem. It didn't align the right posts together, probably because our metal test rig is almost symmetrical. So we click not aligned. We type in that there should be a total of six posts and then click next alignment. Now you can see this is the correct alignment. So we exit out. The scans are now successfully aligned and merged and then we finish. Let's go over exporting in more detail. I click export and I'm going to export scan bodies, posts and abutments. And it saves them to these folders here. The upper jaw is empty because we haven't scanned the upper jaw. And in the lower jaw folder, all the CAD files we requested are there. You can see the posts that were scanned and therefore the system knows that the abutments must have been exactly underneath them and the scan bodies would be directly on top of the abutments. So now we have accurately positioned the CAD files ready for you to use. In addition, in the folder there is a text file that gives you the XYZ coordinates of each post and their three orientation angles, just in case you need the raw data. Normally we use the combined data files as these contain all the data. If you did a merge, you would see scan zero and scan one stored separately. Again, just in case you want to go right back to the original raw data. It may be helpful to combine the implant scans with a scan of the soft tissue. We can show you one way of doing this. We are starting with CAD from the implant scanner and we have a soft tissue scan, which may have been collected with an intraoral scanner. You can see the scans are not aligned, but we can fix that. I'm aligning the scan bodies in the soft tissue scan with the scan bodies CAD from the implant scanner. This is just off the shelf software to demonstrate the steps. You should use your own design software like ExoCAD, for example. You can see they're aligned now. Then next I want to crop out the scan bodies from the soft tissue scan as they are not necessarily accurate. After I've done that, I refill the holes left from the cropping and I can overlay and merge the CAD from the implant scanner to make a complete STL of the jaw. Now you have a nice and incredibly accurate STL file, which you can use as the basis for your prosthesis design. You should now be able to make accurate post scans. Please also check the user instructions on our website from time to time, as we'll make sure these are kept fully up to date.